I'm Keith Helfert. Uh, I have been a designer for 40 odd years. My career started with cars and my love of cars, I suppose, has guided much of the career. I grew up in Cape Town under this beautiful piece of rock that I'm looking at now. I think one has to be influenced by that piece of rock because it's so magnificent. But when I learnt about industrial design and car design, which didn't exist in South Africa at the time, I uh, tried to do that in a very curious way and ended up at the Royal College of Art and from there spent 25 years at Jaguar, designing Jaguars and from then I ended up doing other things as well. I had the amazing honour and privilege of working with Sir William Lyons who had founded the company but not only that had created many of the Jaguar classic cars. He was one of the greatest car designers ever and therefore the chairman and the head of engineering to whom we reported rightly suggested that Sir William choose the designs from the ones on offer and chose mine. And that started a five and a half year working relationship for me as a young designer with one of the greatest car designers ever. In the first car I ever designed there, it was me with Sir William metaphorically holding my hand, guiding me into what became my design style. And that was all about the sculpture, all about the movement in the surfaces. In a sense, my design language, my design style, my design mission, my design belief had been set. So that became my design style for everything else I did, including cars or medical stuff or whatever. I really wanted to have movement and form and flow and sculpture. And because my path was so unusual, I did everything wrong in terms of the way people do it. And that's why the results and my designs were different. So that very unusual background was one of the ultimate prompts for me to try and write a book. So my objective was to print 20 copies for family and friends. And one of the people that I showed it to is a very well-respected South African motoring journalist. And he said, the content of this book should go and should be shown to beyond family and friends. You've just put words and, and images together. If you want a book, that's got to be done properly. Speak to the best designer he knows <laughs> in the business, who happens to work for Porter Press, whose name is Martin Port. So Martin Port did a couple of chapters as of a, an indicative lay, a, a design and layout and, and editing and then sent those to Philip Porter, considered one of the gurus of motoring history in Britain. And for me, <laughs> to have a book published seemed bonkers. To be published by Porter Press, even more bonkers. I love this. This is what I'm very proud of. The back end of that car because I think it captured some of the E-type. And I realized as I was doing it and struggling through to try and type all of this, that at each point that there was a new story to tell. One of those new stories was the experience of designing a car, because although thousands of cars are designed all the time, all over the world. They are never, or very, very seldom, the product of one designer. They are teams and they are committees, whereas my experience, through some lots of strange circumstances, I ended up designing four Jaguar sports cars with complete freedom. For me as a designer, 
The ultimate prize is to create an object of desire. Emotional appeal was our USP. That was our competitive advantage. Because if your, if your product, your designs are more desirable than somebody else's, people will look to re for reasons to buy that one rather than... So design and desire actually have been my driving mantra without me thinking about it until I had to write the book. And the cover image is about, I've, I've created a wall art of my 220 design, and I hope that that actually encapsulated my design philosophy and aspiration. Hence the name Design and Desire. For me, perhaps the most important underlying reason for doing the book is my passion for design and all the publicity and anything that reinforces that to me is a fight worth fighting for and it is one of the reasons why I still believe that the design in Darba is one of the most exciting things that has happened to design in my career because it does that. It actually opens people's eyes to such a huge range of design. And it does just what I'm saying, which is in a sense, in a very small way, I'm trying to do with the book, which is carry that torch for design and good design. So actually writing a book has been a really, in some ways, surreal experience for me. However, in the end, particularly because it's been beautifully done. It's something I'm really proud of.